Many people out there have already given their one minute version of the Mario story, but we compiled the end all be all chronology of all the Mario games. Everything here is completely accurate according to Nintendo's intention, let's begin. Mario Bros were not conceived. The stork carries them across the sea for quick parental delivery. Luigi is kidnapped as Mario plummets to the sea. He lands on friendly shoulders. The Yoshi clan's heroism reunites the twins, defeats a monstrous baby turtle thing, and helps return the Mario Bros back to the parents in Brooklyn, where they grow up. We know nothing about the next 20 to 30 years, which are clouded in mystery. The next thing we do know, however, is that Mario is a totally washed up construction worker who is going by the name Jumpman. Obviously, Mario here has some kind of superhero wannabe obsession going on. Mario's girlfriend gets kidnapped by an ape, so he rescues her and receives his first taste of heroism. So he cages the ape as a trophy so he'll always remember. As DK Jr. tries to rescue his papa, Mario attempts to drown the baby ape. What the hell is wrong with you, Mario? The next few years are rough on Mario. His girlfriend ditches him because he can't keep a job. Luigi helps him get a plumbing job cleaning animals from the sewers of New York City. Mario doesn't seem to have lasted very long because six months later he's already working a temporary gig at a cement factory. Then he joins the military for bomb disposal ordnance. He tries out refereeing for tennis matches, professional golf, and even the circus. Luigi helps him join a wrecking crew, but Mario seems to have pissed off the boss. Apparently, Mario was a total loser until the Mushroom Kingdom discovers him. We're not quite sure how it happened, but somehow Mario and Luigi find themselves in a magical world of warp pipes, dinosaurs, power-ups, talking animals, flying objects, advanced technology, and all kinds of crazy shit like that. The Mushroom People ask them to save Princess Peach from Bowser, an evil sorcerer king of the Koopa race. Sadly, however, the Mushroom People didn't actually tell them where to go. They eventually find her, but when she finds out Mario doesn't have a decent job, it starts a long repetitive history of Mario returning to the the kingdom to play the hero and then going back to real life to suck at everything. He was a boxing referee, a driver in a Formula One Grand Prix, a yarn sweater designer, even a professional juggler. Now he did land a very impressive job as a doctor, but he probably lied about his credentials. Meanwhile, the princess keeps getting captured over and over and over again, and Mario, who is the man, keeps saving the day. Just to go back and fail at being a preschool teacher and doing motocross and art. Bowser eventually sees the uselessness of his endeavors and eventually stops all of his evil plans. This created quite the predicament though because now Mario could no longer be the hero. So to turn things around, Mario brings sports to the Mushroom Kingdom. He brings them tennis, golf, soccer, go-kart racing, basketball, baseball, pinball, the Olympics. Everybody was allowed to participate, even Bowser, but Mario dominated everything. And every time he would win, he would throw this huge-ass Mario party with tons of minigames. Now we had a tough time placing Mario Brothers 2 in the storyline. We believe this game fits at the end. The final scene of the game is Mario sleeping, revealing that everything was a dream. Maybe the whole Mushroom Kingdom is just a dream, and maybe Mario is just a bum who can't keep a job in the real world and can't come out from under his brother's shadow. And what was with trying to kill a baby ape? 